Looks good. Here we go. Is it live? It's is it live. Live? It's live. So the people on Facebook are checking us out as we get ready for episode number two of the Wellness and Weight Loss for Women podcast. You're actually behind the scenes with us right now because we got to fire this up and get, get things going here. So as you're watching... Keep in mind, you may also, either in real time or eventually, uh, be watch, be able to watch that on YouTube. Or you might actually be watching it on YouTube a year later or something. Who knows? The point is, we're trying to get this messaging out there in as many different ways possible. And all we need to do is set up a few different things to capture everything at the same time. And then we keep getting it out there. So, while you're watching, post below let us know where you're watching from any questions you have even if you're a guy a lot of this stuff is going to pertain to you as well the principles some of the insights the tips they'll pertain to you as well but since most of our audience is female here at the studio and abroad all over the world we're going with the, the female theme because it just resonates better but hey look I'm, I'm here I'm half the show I'm a guy so I'm gonna have some, some good stuff for everybody. So is Nikki, and so is anybody else who comes on the show. And we've got a lot of really, really good surprises for you in terms of who's gonna be on here with us. And we're gonna go through that as we go through episode number two. So are you ready to start recording? I think I'm ready. You ready? So down. I'm going to hit, actually, we gotta get our lab mics on. Look at this, see? Episode number two, we're learning in real time here. You get to watch the behind the scenes uh, doings. All right, so there's your lab mic. Heather, how's mine looking? We have Heather behind the scenes here. She is an extern intern, learning some of the ropes here at the studio. That looks good. good we look good here. Good we good? All right. All right. Tap here to start recording. Let me know when you're ready. This is Joey Atlas here, coming to you from the Sculpted Fit Studio in St. John's, Florida, Mandarin. This is episode number two of the Wellness and Weight Loss for Women podcast. And to give you some context, as we're recording this, we also have our Facebook live stream going. That video is also going to be downloaded and, and then uploaded into our YouTube channel which we will share links with you later somehow, some way toward the end of the show, we will have this all figured out on exactly where we're going to direct you to, to get all the visuals, any bonuses, any tip sheets, et cetera, et cetera. But right now, Nikki is my, my right-hand lady here on the scene. She takes care of the studio, she runs the show, and uh, I rely on her for a lot. So right now, I'm relying on her for our notes for the show. Am I not? You are relying on <laughs> All right, me. So she's got them. She's going to take those out. And we're going to go right into what we have outlined here today before we get into the other deeper material. So what do we have first? Awesome. Well, thank you for having me. I'm yeah. excited to be here, Jen. It's going to be good. It's going to be really good. Yeah. All right. So um, on our W3 podcast, I love that. I love that shorthand, by the way. Thank you. Um, we are, let's start out with, you know, who are you? Tell us a little about, about you and what's going on. I know there's tons of people on your Facebook, there's tons of people um, locally, everywhere that know a lot about you, but for those that don't, maybe they're tuning in for the first time, uh, give us a little snapshot. Awesome idea, so we'll do that for both of us, and that's good context. So, a lot of our clients here at the studio will be watching and sharing. Uh, a lot of my clients, coaching clients, program owners, home gym owners around the world will also be tuning in. So most of you kind of already know the story, but every time we tell it, we reveal a little more, something's come out a little differently. But if, if, if one of our clients or coaching clients or subscribers or members have, uh, have, are sharing this with you, and you're new here, new in our world, then this is all going to be important to you because it's going to give you context on our backgrounds, what positions us to be able to speak about all this, and what makes us the right kind of people to help others in the world of health, fitness, wellness, weight loss, longevity, anti-aging, you name it. So here we go. So that question is aimed at me. I am 
actually Joey Atlas Janusa. Atlas was a middle name given to me back when I first started, when I came out of college. And my first client, who became a good friend, was a very clever marketing uh, professional. And he said, you need a, a name that you could say, spell, and remember. So we brainstormed it a bit, and Did we made it. Wasn't, wasn't that? Uh, people couldn't say it, couldn't <laughs> spell it, couldn't remember it. So we went with Joey Atlas, and it stuck ever since. So I'm Joey Atlas for shorthand here. And uh, I was born into this realm thanks to my dad. I grew up watching him exercise most of his life. He had his ups and downs too. We're all human, we all have our ups and downs, and we're gonna talk about those ups and downs on multiple episodes of this podcast because getting through those ups and downs, those hard times, those challenges, are actually one of the biggest obstacles we need to get through, and they're all manageable. So we're gonna talk about that stuff. So my dad set the example, I saw him, saw his friends and I saw the difference in how they lived, what they were able to do, uh, the way they felt, the energy they had, uh, how, how other people relied on them to do things that required strength, uh, things that required vigorous energy. Uh, they hardly complained. They were so happy. Uh, they could do things other people couldn't do. And I saw how other people were who didn't exercise and take care of themselves and eat properly. They were the opposite. And I knew who I wanted to be like. So. That set me on the path to follow my dad, his friends, and all those people in that realm. Went to school, college, got a bachelor's degree, and then got a master's degree in exercise physiology, exercise science, and then a whole history of uh, life. Divorces, kids, uh, opening studios, training people, starting s different fitness businesses, uh, selling clients up north, coming down to Florida to open a new studio, closing that having wild success on the internet, being in a position to then have my real vision come to fruition, which was building this unique machine that augmented my methods and then finding teammates to help me bring this vision and mission to life and help deliver it to the people who need it most. And so that brings us here. Now the story with Nikki, you might be able to see this. She's almost half my age, but there's a story of how we met that we're gonna tell in the future on another episode you were about 10 years old, yeah. give or take, when we met. So go figure that one out. It's a great story. It's one of the reasons why she's sitting here right now. And uh, there's more to come on that. So did that, did that give enough background yeah. and context? I, as think, to, I think that's a good start. It's a good start? Good okay, start. we'll talk more on future episodes. Other things will come out in the storylines. But now we're going to go to Nikki and ask her, how is she here? What's her background? Awesome. All right, well, my background. So I was the first kid. Um, and I always joke with people, you know, my dad wanted a boy, so he'd always say, oh, we'll just, we'll just raise her like a boy. Um, but for me growing up, always outside, always playing, um, you know, we didn't have the luxuries of life, so camping was what we did activity-wise. And we'd always, you know, do things that were, were fairly active. I got into soccer at a young age, and that really carried me through. I played soccer in college. Um, and that's kind of really when I started getting into the fitness side of sports. So as a kid, you know, you're playing around, you're running, you're not really thinking about, oh, I need to move in this not way. It's normal to what you're doing. Exactly. It's just, it's just what you do. You know, you go home on the way home, I go to Dairy Queen, have a thing. It doesn't matter. You're just a kid playing. Um, and then in college, my habits change. So, you know, living in a dorm 10 hours away, um, playing Division One competitive soccer training two plus hours a day. My freshman year I gained 14 pounds. Mm -hmm. Still with that intense, crazy workouts, um, for that long I still gained a ton of weight. Um, so my sophomore year I really got into the whole wellness spectrum of how to eat properly, how to work out properly and recover so that you are better. Um, was able to lose that weight, uh, starting really getting into the fitness side of sports. My coach was able to give me my uh, our fitness days, which are Fitness Tuesdays, my favorite day of the week. I would schedule them, I'd organize them, and went from there. Got my degree in psychology, and you know, had a different couple different things. Tried an office job, didn't work for me. Called you, saw what you, you know. Your mom said I was up to something. She first. did. She, she was like, the grapevine. she's like, you need to, you need to reach out to Joey. I think he's got something going on. Gave you a call, and uh, and now we're here. Here we are. Yeah. That's the short version. We'll, we'll tell the longer version another time mm -hmm. in a future episode, but that's fantastic. So thank you for sharing that. 
So what else do we have here? What's our what's our format today? What are we going to be talking about? All right. So what's next? We mentioned a little bit, or you covered a little bit in the beginning, but why are we doing this? Yeah, good question. Why are we doing this? We're doing this because it's a bunch of reasons. Number one, we know our method, our philosophy, our approach is very different than traditional, conventional methods out there of working out and mm -hmm. the crazy diets and all this other stuff. And so, as you know, as we spoke about, uh, we know we have to try to get our message out there as, as broad and big as possible and as often as possible and told in many different ways. So to be able to have all this technology at our fingertips now, you know, the Facebook Live going, that's gonna go on YouTube, we've got the podcast we're recording right now that people are listening to, to have all this at our fingertips uh, just makes all the sense in the world for us to use it, put the time in, put the planning in, and the work to create a platform that allows us to keep delivering this message and all the different questions and, and thoughts that people have and the challenges they have that we can address and help them with. So we we do it to, to help people, right? And to also get our message out there, they can discover us. Mm -hmm. And if they're local and they discover us, especially if it's a woman, she can come to the studio and start becoming part of this community and be supported toward reaching her goals like all the other women. Uh, if it's a male, he can sign up for possible one-on-one -on -one training with me or one of the other coaches in the off hours. Uh, if it's somebody long distance who doesn't live close by, they could do a hybrid version where they can have one of either one of the home gym systems delivered to their home and then they follow our personal training videos. Uh, or they could wait, wait on the home gym system and start with all of our other materials that don't require the home gym system. Uh, just some space and all the accessories that we list out for them that they either have already or can get very quickly, easily, and cheaply on Amazon or another site like that or locally. So. Being able to do that um, helps us draw them in. It, may, it allows them to realize we exist, mm -hmm. right? Because one of the biggest challenges for people is that they only think the hardcore, traditional, mass media, mass marketed stuff is what exists. Mm -hmm. If they don't know we exist, they can't benefit from us. Or they think it's not effective to do it any other way. Correct. Because everybody says, oh, you got to go hardcore, you got to be beast mode, you got to be boss lady killing it with weightlifting and go hard or go home, no pain, no gain. And we're against that. We, we don't believe in it. There, a little bit of that is okay if you, if you want to take the risk and you feel like going all out a day here, a day there. But 90% of the time, if not more, give or take, you don't need to go beast mode. You don't need to kill it. None of that crazy stuff. You don't need to lift heavy weights and follow all these old personal trainer gym myths. We're here to show you that there is a different way, a newer way, a better way, a more progressive way that most people just don't even consider it to be valid until they come and try it mm -hmm. or they see us on the street and say, oh, you guys look you know, like you're pretty decent shape. What do you do? Do you do that hit stuff or you do that cross training stuff? Uh, what do you do? And then we explain to them. We show them video samples on our YouTube channels and uh, the studio channel. And they say, well, that looks kind of doable. I think I can do that too. Or, you know, my family members can do that too. It might be worth a try because you guys look like it works, right? So that in a nutshell is, is why we're doing this because we can, we need to, we want to, and other people need to find us and, and be helped by us. Yeah, absolutely. I think you go on the podcast and there are so many like hardcore methods and right. ways. And it's just for, it's so small the population that needs that or, or even, you know, benefits from it. It's like, elite athletes or, or people that are in their 20s and trying to develop speed and agility for specific events. Um, I still play soccer, so I do some of that stuff, but this, your method, is lifetime. It's your method now. It's not just mine. It's the <laughs> method. It's the whole team's it's method. It's the team's yes. method. Um, it's about health and long-term success. I remember, and we'll get into our story later on for sure, but briefly, um, Joey's first session, so after I gave him a call, after my mom said, hey, check out, see what Joey's doing, um, he said, all right, well, come over to the house. Let me, let me put you through a workout. And I had just come off my college days, so go in and, all right, so we're going to do this slow thing. Well, take like, it let's, out. More context. Don't lose your train of thought. Like, we had one of the turquoise units at my house mm -hmm. and the original one built 12 years That's ago, right? right? So, yeah, yeah, so yeah. I had one of the newer ones as mm -hmm. we're gearing up to 
job for the studio. So you mm -hmm. came over. Yep, so I came over, um, I tried out the unit, and what was it, 30 minutes? That's it. Oh, 30 <laughs> minutes, let me tell you. I felt it immediately. We didn't do any burpees. There were no, no burpees. Flip no, up. no, no slamming kettlebells or tire flipping or weight throws or mm -hmm. Olympic lifts. This was all training on one of these units at, at my former house. And by the end, yeah, I have a and I don't know if I share this with you. I was planning on doing a workout after <laughs> <laughs> I'd come over and seen you know what you had going on, and I did not. It was wonderful. It was it was amazing. So it was an eye opener. It was an eye opener. It's not out there. Now I'm in the fitness world, right. and I was in the fitness world, and that's why I think it's so important that um, it's starting to get out there yeah. this yeah. way. And hence, this podcast is another way, and these videos are another way for us to get this message and methodology out there, so that we can change the world by helping the other I don't know 85 percent of the population who should not be, does not want to be cannot be doing all the hardcore stuff. You mentioned only a small percentage of the population. Mm -hmm. That's true. It, like, I used to do that. We used to do that. We were extreme fitness fanatics who wanted to live the lifestyle because we valued it so much and we were hooked into it. Mm -hmm. But 85% of the population, does not they're not wired like that. Mm -hmm. However, they do need the benefits of health, wellness, and longevity in a way that suits them the best. Hence, cool thing is we put this all together and have discovered it for ourselves first mm -hmm. and now we can bring it to the other 85% of the population who's either done with the hardcore beast mode stuff killing it bro or no is smart enough not to even try it because they've had friends who've been injured they've had relatives who've been burnt out their doctor has warned them against it you know or they've read a good article saying if you're gonna do it be prepared for these risks and these possible injuries mm -hmm. so and uh, they find us eventually, hopefully, just like you're finding us now. So what do we got next? Perfect. It's a perfect segue. So, segue, here we go. Tell me about some of the client stories or successes of recent. Yeah, this is, there's a lot of them. Um, but these are, the, these are the detailed breakthroughs that lots of people struggle with quietly. They're subtleties of what's going on with people who are trying to make good progress. So I actually just wrote about one today in the newsletter I sent out this morning. And it seems to be a common theme with the, per the people I'm working out with now, who I'm coaching long distance. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it also, historically, it always surfaces somehow, always. And that is, it ties into what we were just talking about. When somebody out there realizes, okay, I can't do all this stuff. Like I try for a month and I'm, I, I'm burnt out or I try for three weeks and my back is killing me mm -hmm. or I try it again and my shoulder goes out, you name it. They've been led to believe that the only way to accomplish changing your body is by punishing it and forcing it to change, right? right? So that's, that's their belief system, that's their paradigm. Hearing that, no, no, you can change it by actually us doing the opposite by going gently, removing fast, risky movements, taking out the weights, like setting all the weights and the kettlebells aside, and taking out momentum, moving in a more controlled, focused manner, taking advantage of pause, isometric, hold movements, et cetera, et cetera. It's, it doesn't make sense because not everybody's talking about that and not everybody's writing about that. They're writing about the opposite. So when we tell them this, it's like, it sounds too good to be true. But now when they experience it in the first few weeks of coaching and training, whether they're local or long distance, the light bulbs go off. They're like, oh my God, I, f I feel that. I feel this. It it's true. Something's happening. Now a few weeks in or a month or two in and their body starts changing, let alone start feeling it. And they start noticing things changing. They're seeing muscle tone. Their, their shape is changing. They're tightening up. They're getting the changes that they've wanted to for so long, but they're not doing any of the stuff they they used to. They're doing something very different. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, they have like this awakening. Like, wow, how embarrassed am I? How silly do I feel? Like all these years wasted when I could have been doing something like this, right? What happens then is, unlike years past, when they constantly thought every time they tried something, they're going to fail. Like they became programmed to not believe in themselves and what they were going to try. 
They just knew somehow this is going to end. It's either I'm going to get hurt or I'm going to be burnt out and, and toasted. They start sticking with it long enough, get the changes, and then they realize there's there are probably other things that I've been misleading myself about after taking in all these different messages of confusion and you know everybody talking about this method, that method, this hardcore, that you know that beast mode, this. Then they start to realize, wow, like this whole this whole scenario can change. This whole picture can change because the foundational method of fitness training is so different now, and I'm getting results, and I'm not hurt, I'm not burnt out, my back isn't killing me, my joints feel good. Then they start realizing maybe the nutrition part was wrong. Maybe all the crazy diets I tried were wrong. Maybe there's more to be learned there to make this all happen faster, and now this time be sustainable for life. They have a revelation. Wow, this is so easy. Maybe this is the thing that I can do forever. Mm -hmm. right? So that's been a common theme in the recent uh, long-distance coaching clients I've been working with, is that they're waking up to this entirely new school of thought, mm -hmm. and they're living proof that it works. And now their whole idea of what's possible for them, short-term and long-term, totally changes. Mm -hmm. they, they speak differently. The energy coming from them is different. They realize, there's a whole new world of opportunity here, and I'm, I'm going to reach my goals this time and be able to keep them. That makes sense? Awesome. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Cool. What's next? I'm, I'm just checking the app here to make sure we're still recording. So people watching on Facebook, you'll be seeing us check in here. We're, we're good. We're 20 minutes in, and we're looking good. Awesome. All right, so we did have a couple of people that reached out um, asking specific questions when you posted about this podcast on Facebook. Right. Um, so we can get into those, but... As always, I have some housekeeping. Um, if you're watching this and you're local, um, we do have some events coming up. So um, a lot of our ladies, and potentially, you know, if you struggle with anything, you know, foot health related or anything like that, um, or just anything in general, what we found our ladies are struggling with some, some foot health and some foot issues. So we brought in uh, Dr. Jeffrey Brimmer. He is a First Coast Foot and Ankle Clinic. He's gonna come and speak with us on Monday night. That's gonna be the 12th. Um, so this coming seven, Monday. This coming Monday, 7.30 p.m. at the studio. Um, primarily talking about bunion and hammer toes. We will have it filmed uh, for clients that can't come in and, and see it in person and live. Um, but that should be really great. Awesome. Should yeah. be a really, really great one. Excellent. And then we've got our um, October 5K coming up as well and training is going really really well for that a lot of our ladies were worried at first because they're not runners right. um, and you know it's not about running we yeah. have many ladies that walk you just need to get that cardiovascular health it's right. important it's really really you know it's a it's important to what we do not just fitness wise but health long term mental health good point don't lose your train of thought so 5k is 3.2 miles mm -hmm. right now most of the ladies who come here are clients most of them come in kind of insecure about themselves, mm -hmm. right? So maybe a year ago or two years ago, running a 5K was not even an option or a thought. Mm -hmm. But when they see how much they progress in here and realize this whole world of potential they have and how they are turning back the clocks, they realize that a 5K is not out of the question anymore. Right. And so now they're amongst other women who are like, yeah, we're gonna support each other, we can do this, mm -hmm. that camaraderie, coaching team you guys let these women know no you can do it we're training you properly so that you're fully capable of doing it again they, they have a whole new paradigm of living mm -hmm. where their potential is much greater than what they thought it was a year ago two years ago three years ago yeah. right so this is these are why we look to these events and opportunities for us to, and the team and clients to bond support each other grow and challenge themselves in a very fun and safe way. Yeah, absolutely. And with that, with that, uh, that group, what's great? We actually had a client who said now she feels comfortable and confident. She'll invite her friends out to go for evening walk, nice. rather than go for evening drinks. That's huge. And let me tell you something. On the topic of walking, walking is awesome. I don't care how hardcore everybody's touting out there, and you got to do these sprint runs and all that. Walking for health, wellness, longevity is super powerful. We are built to walk as humans, regardless of your natural athletic talents or abilities, 
We're built to walk. These bodies are made to move for every single one of us. We're made to walk. Take advantage of that and make walking part of your regular routine for health, wellness, and longevity because it does count. You just have to be consistent with it. You can play our podcast while you're walking. Mm -hmm. You can count on those. You can get a friend, go out. You can take a loved one, a spouse, partner, kid, child, anybody, coworkers, you name it. Corporate wellness, we advise our corporate wellness clients out there. Utilize time during the day to go for short walks, lunch walks, you name it. It all counts, it all adds up. It's the cumulative effect of the things that work that may lead to the big results. Absolutely. So pick up where you left off. All right, that's my that's my housekeeping with those, those two things. We'll have more next week. All right, but, what do we got next? All right, so we did have some Q&As that came, uh, some questions that came in from Facebook um, and through email as well. So I'm gonna hit you with four rapid fire questions. And if any of these trigger anything from you, just bring it up. All right, cool. deal. Uh, Annabelle asks, about fasting, if it's good uh, or if it's not good, and just a little bit more about what fasting is. Okay. We don't know if Facebook Live, we don't know if Nikki's speaking loud enough for you, so as you're watching Facebook Live, if you can post below at this point, say yes, we can hear Nikki, or can Nikki speak up a little bit, we'll know for future episodes the decibels Nikki's gotta come out with, or whoever's on the set with us, how high we need to speak in order for you to hear it too on that camp. So thank you for posting, let us know. So fasting, I'm a big fan of fasting. Let's keep in mind here before we even get into it. Fasting is not a diet. We're not talking about Atkins. We're not talking about keto. We're not talking about paleo. We're not talking about any other diet. I don't want to name too many because I don't want to go down the whole list, but any kind of diet is a structured form of eating and not eating certain foods, leaving out certain foods, including certain foods. Fasting is about not eating or eating at certain times. So big difference there. It's not a diet. It's a, it's a way of approaching your eating in a 24 hour period or longer, of course. So I'm a big fan of quote unquote fasting. Um, I like to say what I do is, is actually called intermittent eating. I like to go against the grain. I like to be a little different and place the focus somewhere else. So instead of intermittent fasting, I call it intermittent eating. My sister and I were talking about this. To me, it was very just uh, subconscious, like it's the way I thought. Mm -hmm. And my sister mentioned something about either intermittent eating or uh, something along those lines. And I said, well, yeah, that's how I think of it. I, I don't know if I've ever said it, but that's how I think of it. And this was a conversation we had in New York a couple weeks ago. And so that kind of solidified it. Um, when I spoke about it verbally, vocally, um, I count it as intermittent eating. So I'm a big fan of it. Uh, for me, about 30 some odd years ago, give or take, I don't know, I was maybe 17, 18, 19, when I used to get ready for the bodybuilding competitions, me and some other of my peers who believed in that method, we didn't call it intermittent fasting. We didn't call it fasting. We just didn't eat until around midday. It was just something we did. It didn't even have a name, okay? So this has been around a long, long time. It just didn't have a fancy name for everybody to speak about it with and create all this hype and hoopla around it. So we, it was just something we did. We just didn't eat until after we've earned the right to eat that day. So we trained in the morning, maybe cardio as well, our training session. And we would earn our first meal, which usually came in around 11.30, 12, 12.30. So we essentially fasted all morning. No calorie intake. And it worked like magic. We felt awesome. We dropped body fat without thinking about it. Um, but I never stuck with that for life. It was just always something we did. Not everybody, because some guys were very much against not eating for 14, 16 hours. Mm -hmm. They thought they would lose muscle mass, right? But for us, we tried it, it worked perfectly, so we stayed with it. Mm -hmm. Over the course of my lifetime, I would go back to doing that, and I still didn't call it fasting. I just did it when I wanted quick results to come back from some dark times where I gained a lot of weight, mm -hmm. which is, everybody knows now, it's part of my history. And if you're new here, we'll share that on future episodes, uh, my past challenges of ups and downs and dark times and overeating and food codependencies and such. But I would go to it when I needed to. It worked like gangbusters, and then eventually, in the last, I don't know how many years, it got this 
sexy name, intermittent fasting. Everybody's talking about it. I personally have experienced in the last several years since I've made it a regular part of my life now, easy to maintain favorable body composition down close to 10, 9, 11%, sometimes 12% in the winter, in the off season, mm -hmm. uh, when the holidays come around. Uh, my health has improved the last probably four or five years, uh, especially last year. Like we noticed some really big improvements, especially in my cholesterol levels, which were a challenge genetically for me and my family. But still, what I believe is from not just intermittent eating, but what I'm also choosing to eat as well. And my diet is, is pretty good. There's some enjoyable things on there. I'm not like crazy strict. It's just my eating is in line with my personal values and goals. Right? So fasting, I believe, in addition to all the literature out there, that it does help improve health markers, not for everybody, but for many people, it will help improve health markers, vital, vital stats. And I'm a big fan of it. Now, that being said, what I'm saying now is not for anybody who's listening to go do it. Like, you need guidance. You need to know what it is you're exactly doing and if you actually should be, be doing it right now. What does that mean? That means have a conversation with your doctor, have a conversation with your professional trainer, nutritionist, and or doctor, and give them context. Let them know all about you and that you want to try what is called intermittent fasting, uh, what we call intermittent eating. Let them know you want to try it and get clearance and get guidance and do a little bit of homework. Don't just go into it blindly, do a little homework. If you're local, if you want to meet up with us long distance for us to coach you through that, that's an option. Mm -hmm. But if you're thinking locally and you want to get started ASAP, you, you can reach out to us or you can go look locally. Um, again, start with your doctor locally, of course, and then work forward from there. So big fan of fasting. Awesome. So Annabelle, it's a yes, but do your own research. Okay? Yeah, it's a big yes. That doesn't mean just go do it now. Whoever's <laughs> listening, you're listening if you're listening because you can hear us. Uh, do your homework first. Make sure you're starting properly. You have full structure and you know long term what your aim is on how to keep intermittent fasting slash eating in your life as part of your health, wellness, and longevity lifestyle and goals. Mm -hmm. I do want to just mention um, Joey talked about his body fat being eight, nine, ten um, for males, um, especially on our women's podcast here. Um, that's not an ideal range for women. That's probably a little too lean. Right. Um, we'll go over those in you know body fat percentage and compositions in future episodes. But um, a male body fat percentage can be much lower, um, and that's healthy for women. Um, I would say, you know, that's a little on the unhealthy side. I'm gonna sure that you get sure. a little bit more uh, body fat Thank for you. you. Um, awesome. All right, let's go to question number two. Nadia asked about motivation. And I can pull her full question here. Those are my No, that's good. Short I, yeah, that's good. So Nadia actually asked several questions, but I picked out the motivation one because I thought it would be a good talking point for us. Mm -hmm. When somebody asks a general question about motivation, I kind of know where they're coming from. I think we all know where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. Most people feel that they lack the ability to get and stay motivated, right? Contextually speaking, mm -hmm. people, when they fall off the program, if, 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 if they don't get hurt or if they don't get burnt out, and sometimes the burnout causes lack of motivation, right? So when we speak of motivation, it has to come from some place that is more than just how I look on the surface, mm -hmm. what people see when they look at me. Just getting my weight down for the sake of me getting on the scale and seeing a number that I like versus a number that I don't like. That is short-lived. That will not provide any fuel for motivation whatsoever. There's no inspiration in that. It will die out either after the vacation or the reunion is over, or unless they give up before they even get to that event or that milestone they were working toward with that short-term vision. The motivation has to come from someplace much more meaningful. It has to come from your life itself. You wanting to be around in 10 years, 20 years, 40 years, for your grandkids, for your kids, for all the things that you see in the future that you want to be fully functional and able for, that has to fuel the motivation for what you do now so that when you arrive in your future, you're not in a wheelchair. You're still alive, actually. 
You have all of your capabilities. You have mental clarity and acuity. You have full capability to, to go fishing, go do gardening, go hiking, go on, a, go travel. Even traveling requires your body to work properly. So this is not, this transcends just the superficial aspect that most people strive for. Oh, I want to look good. I need to be sexy. I need to get my, I need to be thinner. I need to get this weight off. All that can happen if the focus on what motivates you is fueling something much more powerful and more meaningful. So the motivation, the, the, the source of the energy that fuels the motivation and the thoughts that we have in our minds that are fueling us and propelling us forward have to be multidimensional and they have to have multiple layers of meaning in order to make that motivation so strong that hardly anything can get them off track anymore. Unlike when it was very one-dimensional and superficial, just about anything can throw you off track. And I think anybody listening right now knows that because you've lived through it. We all have, mm -hmm. right? Make sense? Absolutely, yeah. Know your why. That's it. Why you're doing it is, is where the motivation comes from. I love it. All right. Melissa, oh, we, we briefly mentioned this topic. Melissa asked about keto. Is it sustainable? Is it healthy? Okay, short and sweet here because we can actually do a whole podcast on keto. So we're going to touch on it briefly and save it for a whole episode in the future. Keto is what I consider a trendy fad right now. I know a lot of the people that I'm working with, people I've worked with in the past few years who ventured into trying keto as the diet of choice. Mm -hmm. Everybody ends up stopping at some point. Two main reasons. One is because it simply becomes unsustainable and unrealistic. Hence, they have to stop. Two is that they actually start feeling horrible. Weird things start happening. I don't have to go down the list yet. We'll get into those when we get through the full episode. But they start feeling the opposite way of how they want to feel. They start feeling crummy. Their energy is weird. They're, they're mentally foggy. Their, their body's feeling weird. They need to go to the doctor. They just don't feel right anymore. They go through this cycle of going, you know, the novelty and the energy and the enthusiasm of starting this new hot trendy fattish diet method fuels them in the beginning. And when they're trying to force themselves to stick with it, they start feeling really crappy and crummy. And they realize, hmm, maybe this isn't so good after all. Now, that being said, I have had clients who've done it short term as a way to get their body to start letting go of fat. And for certain people, that works. For some people, they still can't do it. It's just like after a week, like I can't do this. I can't eat all this fat and hardly any carbs. And I'm, I'm peeing on these things to test my ketone levels. Who does that? Right. right? They realize, okay, this is a little. The extremists can do it. There are plenty of extremists. Your extreme fitness fanatics and enthusiasts and, and, and trainers, they will make themselves do it because it's something they want to stand for, it worked for them, they're gonna make it keep working for them. Some of them though eventually realize, all right, I'm throwing up the flag, this isn't lifetime realistic. Mm -hmm. So they realize something else has to come into play here. So keto, um, I'm against it there. Now, that's, this is for dieting purposes. We're talking about mass market right. dieting purposes. That aside, there are studies coming out now that show that keto style of nutrition is helpful for certain diseases. Now, whether that's short-term, medium-term, long-term, or intermittent keto over the course of a year or you know several months or what have you, if it's rotated in and out of a person with a medical condition's schedule, and the doctors are overlooking it, you know, keto, uh, well-versed keto medical professionals who are know all about it inside and out and know the disease they're applying it to for this particular patient. If that brings about improvements in that disease and the way they're monitoring it and doing it in their lifestyle, I'm all for it. Right. But as a mass market, typical consumer dieting methodology, it gets an X. Yeah. No, not here. Agreed. Agreed. A friend that would choose bacon over bananas <laughs> at breakfast, she's like, no, I can't. I can't have that banana. But do you want a piece of bacon? There you go. Different, different. Uh, Leads to a different result. All right, so our last question, Leda. Oh, Leda actually comes to the studio now. Don't you train her husband here? Yep, Leda's a client. Hello, Leda, if you're watching. Raul, if you're listening. Raul is one of my personal clients as well, her husband. What did Leda ask? She asked about low-carb diets and how it helps prevention of cancer. 
Awesome. So keep this in mind. Again, whether you're watching on Facebook Live right now, uh, watching on YouTube later, or listening into the in the podcast right now in your ear, everything we talk about has to be considered from a contextual perspective. Okay. So that question, while awesome, it can apply differently to different people or different. Two different people asking that same question can mean two different things in their eyes. So let's, we'll approach this with some, some flexible context, okay? Low carbohydrate nutrition uh, or diet profile in regards to cancer prevention, I believe, generally speaking, if we're asking in regards to how our society eats as a whole, our culture as a whole, and I'm talking about the unhealthy 85%, yes. I believe, quote unquote, a low, lower or low carbohydrate diet. She said lower, so we have to get it. We have to be careful. Lower versus low are two different things. Mm -hmm. So a lower carbohydrate diet, I believe, is a huge cancer preventer. Why is that? Well, it, again, if we're talking about the mass market, society as a whole, their carbohydrates are coming from highly dense, highly processed, mm -hmm. overloaded sources of carbohydrate. We're not talking about generally healthy carbohydrates, minimally or unprocessed carbohydrates. Carbohydrates that are from yellow potatoes, uh, good rice, quinoa, healthy healthy, you know, he healthy organic breads are even good because they're minimally processed. A lot of the garbage is taken out. And the volume also, of course, when we say lower, has to be well matched to that person's physical output and their lifestyle. So again, everybody's different. You know, this is, there's content, layers of context here that we have to be careful of. But generally speaking, yes, completely believe that a lower carbohydrate for the average typical, not only American, but even in the other countries that have uh, increased in their food production capabilities and distribution, not in a good way, uh, people are overeating and they're overeating too much bad food, mm -hmm. right? So if we can make that that type of carbohydrate consumption lower and replace it with higher quality, health-boosting, health-enhancing, anti-aging type carbohydrates instead of life-killing carbohydrates, then absolutely, I believe not only does it prevent cancer, but prevents all kinds of diseases, diabetes. Uh, I believe it also prevents some of the brain diseases. Uh, there's a whole list of those, but I believe lower processed, high volume carbohydrates of our average typical American eater will definitely reduce many diseases, let alone just cancer. Mm -hmm. And I believe there's proof of it out there. We can pull up studies right now on the laptops and find proof of all this that we're looking for. I mean, one search will start revealing many, many studies that are pointing to this happening and being found. Absolutely. Not just now, but past decade or two, there's, it's out there. And we'll, it, the proof will only become stronger and stronger as more specific studies are done with specific subgroups of demographics, exact types of foods, culture, how they were raised, more and more proof will start to stack up proving that to be true. I have no doubt. Mm -hmm. I believe it. Absolutely. All right. So I believe those are the questions that I had before this started. Now, we may have some questions on that live video, or we may have some questions later on. Um, so we'll definitely want to see how people can ask more questions. Yeah, anybody who is posting questions on the live on Facebook or underneath YouTube later, we will go back, look at those questions, bring them into our main podcast document for the next episode or later. So we're going to address as many of them as we can. There'll probably be a lot of overlap and similarities in certain questions, but we want what you want to know, what you're challenged with to be what fuels part of this podcast and these video series so that you're getting what you need to make the progress you want to make. Make sense? Makes a lot of sense. All right, what else do we have? I think that's it. That was my short list. All right, so before we wrap up, we have some really important things to say here. We're still fine-tuning what we're going to say to you at the end of these podcasts and videos because we know you may very well want to come connect with us. If you're a local, and you're near the studio, you wanna come explore what's going on here, meet the coaching team, meet other clients, try out some sample sessions, have a studio tour, maybe even try a free personal training session if you're looking for one-on-one -on -one or a hybrid combo. Mm -hmm. At least right now, we can tell you, go to sculptafit.com, that's S-C-U-L-P-T-A-F-I-T.com, 
we will try to post these links somewhere where you're either listening or watching right now. The links may be right where you are, but we're going to do them vocally here. You can even, if, if, the, if it's a reasonable daytime hour, not on a Sunday, you can call or text the studio line, which is? It is 904-891-3680. You'll likely be talking to me. Um, even if it is on Sunday, you can call and leave a voicemail. Um, leaving me a good time to call you back and we can make sure we can connect it that way as well. Text works. Some people aren't super phone call, right. uh, you know, they prefer text. Text me. Text us at the studio uh, if phones don't work for you in terms of the calls. Perfect. So that's 904-891-3680 to call or text the studio line. You might get Nikki, possibly somebody else, but if not, somebody will be back in touch with you. If you're not local, or if you are local and you are male, we still have something for you if you're ready to get serious. So still reach out to that same number. We'll explore different private options for you to get you on track. It'll either be with me or most likely with one of the other coaches in the private hours uh, or possibly at home too. We do home training as well. If you're a long distance, you, knowing that you maybe have been following me since I went online in 2006 or you just came into our world a few hours ago, you might be on the other side of the world. You might be in Australia, you might be in Japan, you might be up in Canada, the UK, anywhere in Europe. Who knows where? Thing is, right now you see we're helping you, whether you're on video or listening to the podcast, we are helping you by the information we're sharing with you. And if you want us to help you directly with coaching, uh, long distance coaching, or you actually want to explore some of the programs we have for you, the free videos or the, vid or the video programs that are for sale, or if you want to explore ordering a home gym system for your home, your office, your vacation home, for you and your family, we can certainly do that. Let me think, where's the best place for them to reach out? You can come find us on Facebook. Mm -hmm. You can go to the, you can search sculpt -to fit on Facebook, S-C-U-L-P-T-A-F-I-T. You can come find me on Facebook, just search Joey Atlas Fitness. You can also come to fitnesstraining.live, F-I-T-N-E-S-S, -S, training, T-R-A-I-N-I-N-G, fitnesstraining.live. When you get to that page, you'll be able to sign up for several free videos that you can do on your own at home, and it will also give you an email connection to reach out to us directly and let us know how, how it is you would like us to best help you get past your challenges, your struggles, uh, and have you work toward your goals, your, your biggest visions you have for yourself in the future, and so that you can have an awesome life in the best way possible with our methods. And that's it. We, uh, I think we're done. I think we're done. we're done. That's it. That's episode number two. We appreciate your ear. We appreciate your eyes on video. Please share this with at least one person. Think of a family member, uh, a friend, a coworker, or thousands of them. And hit the share buttons, take the links, post them on your social media. The more we get this message out there, this unique way, this unique mindset, this unique methodology, the more people we will help, the better place this world becomes, and everybody gets to be happier in their own skin. That's it. Well done. Good job. Right. We'll see you on the next one. So we're going to shut this down. The Facebook Live is going to keep going. That will stop. That's our episode in the books, episode number two, 46 minutes. And we'll take off our lab. And if you're still watching on Facebook Live or if you're watching this on YouTube, let us know what you thought. You got any critiques? We're all ears. What can we improve? We want to know. Post it below. Or if you have just lots of praise and good things to say and any sweet thank yous, post below. We want to know. And again, if you haven't posted your question for the next episode, please do so. Pardon my walking by. And we'll see you next time.